He left out no age group. Everyone is involved. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Okay? I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Notice something. The signs and wonders do not come till after the prophetic word comes. Did you get it? God always says it and then he does it. Acts chapter 9 verse 11, okay? The Lord told him uh, in Acts chapter 9, and I'm not going to do this one. This is Acts chapter 9. Let me just tell you about it. Acts chapter 9 is about uh, the uh, uh, Saul being called into the ministry, and a fellow named Ananias, his, uh, God speaks to Ananias and says, Ananias, I want you to go, and I want you to lay hands on Saul that he might receive his uh, sight, because I blinded him along the way, and he's praying, and he's waiting on He's seen you in a vision, and he's waiting on for you to come and speak to him, and you're going to speak over him the purpose of God for his life. And I want you to know, Ananias, who's not an apostle, he is not one of the fivefold ministry, he is not a deacon. This is the only time that the man's name is mentioned. So what, that, what does that make him? Look, look at your neighbor again and says, that just makes him a church member like me. That's all. That's it. And God gave him a word to one of the most important men who will ever live, and that is Saul. And he gives him a word that lays out the rest of his life and the rest of his ministry. Are you listening to me how important these words are that you said? I'm not going to go through all that because I'm, I'm going to take you somewhere else. Okay? Acts chapter 9, you can read it there. I've got it in your notes, okay? I'm going to 1 Timothy. Paul, Saul becomes a uh, prophet and teacher. That's what we find in Acts chapter 13. We may read that in just a minute. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, Saul has a, uh, a son in the Spirit. A son in the Spirit is one that goes alongside. This is the very heart of Paul, and he goes along in Paul's ministry, and Timothy has been sent to, uh, 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 I think it was Thessalonica. Uh, but anyway, T Timothy has been sent to this church, and uh, he gets discouraged there. Have you ever gotten discouraged? People won't listen to him. You know why? He's too young. He's not the preacher. Who does he think he is? Now listen to me. He's the representative of Paul, who is the representative of Jesus Christ. You better be receiving him. You listening? But Timothy gets discouraged, so Paul has to remind Timothy of something. What does he remind him of? Do not neglect your gift which was given you through the prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. How did he get his ministry? How did he get his gift? The elders laid hands on and prophesied over him and sent Timothy out. Timothy, it don't matter what they say about you. It matters what God said about you. Are you listening to me? I'm not going to read that one. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. We find Paul again and Barnabas, and here's where we find him, okay? In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Then it leads them. Then it, it, then, it, then it lists them. Barnabas, Simon, called Nigar, Lucas of, of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, or P, uh, Paul, okay? While they were worshiping, in the Lord, worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Now, now just a minute, okay? Just a minute. I'm going to put this in, in context, and I want you to get the practical part of this. The Holy Spirit said. How does Holy Spirit talk? When he's talking to a group, how does he talk? He talks through individuals. He just told you there are prophets and teachers there. I believe those both are together. I believe they're prophet teachers. And, and they are both prophet teachers together. And, and they what? And the Holy Spirit speaks. How does he do that? Through a prophetic word that's spoken through that prophecy. Right there, I want you to set us apart what Saul and Barnabas for the work that I've called you to do and send them off. There's a prophetic word given for people set in ministry, okay? In verse uh, chapter 21, Acts 21, I'm showing you how much prophetic uh, voice there is in the book of Acts and the starting of the church. 
It's just been prophesied that the church will be known for prophetic words because I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and you sons and daughters will what? They'll prophesy. Okay? And so now we see the fulfillment of that. In Acts chapter 21 and verse 10, we find a, uh, uh, a prophet mentioned. This, this prophet is pretty famous. He's only mentioned two times in Scripture, but both of those times are in the book of Acts. And he's a prophet from Jerusalem, and his name is Agabus. Okay? After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus, Peter, uh, Paul is talking. After we had been there a number of days, that's there in Caesarea. And after we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judah. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt and tied his own hands and feet with it and said, The Holy Spirit says, In this way the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. And when he heard this, and when we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. I ain't got time to read all of that, whatever. I want you to get the picture. What happened? A prophet, a well-known prophet, came. his name is Agabus. He's mentioned in uh, Acts chapter 11 as the first mention of his name. And we might go there and may not go there. Acts chapter 11, and Agabus comes, and Agabus the prophet with a group of prophets. He didn't come by himself, came with a group of prophets. That's what it says. And he stood up, and he took, said, Paul, get the picture here. Not all this is written down, but it, it, it's, it, Paul, Rick, give me your belt. And so Rick takes off his belt. That's what Paul did. And he hands it to the prophet. And you know what the prophet does? He wraps it around his hands. And then he wraps one around his legs. And he says, this is what the Holy Spirit says. The man of this belt, Paul, will, will happen to him. He will be bound by the Jews. And he will, whatever, in, in the whole deal. So uh, that was a prophetic word. I want you to see how dramatic prophets are. Does... Does, does that not seem a little strange to you? A little dramatic? I want you to realize that God dramatizes. There is a purpose for that. God dramatizes for the purpose of us remembering. If, I just, if I'm just doing things right now, I'm going to tell you, some of you will remember parts of this message. Some of you won't even remember what the message was about in that whole deal. But if I do something crazy, can I tell you something? You'll remember the crazy no matter what. Are you listening to me? So it's important for us to get into the prophetic uh, prophecy that we're doing because prophecy should be delivered with emotion and, if you will, with dramatics in, in that whole deal. So that, that's a part of it. So I want you to see that. Agabus. What does Agabus do? He comes down to a place where the Apostle Paul, if you go on in this same chapter, you'll find out that this is where Philip is. And Philip's daughters, what does Philip's daughters do? They prophesy. They prophesy. I want you to get that because I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you all those things. But I want you to see it right now. That the church's ministry from the very beginning has been a prophetic ministry. Speaking forth the purposes and the plans of God for people who are in the church. And not only that, for outside the church. We find in yeah, Acts chapter 11, the first mention of Agabus is right here. Now listen to what is said here. This is Acts chapter 11. They come to Agabus, first time we ever see him as a prophet, comes down to Antioch. Antioch is the first uh, uh, Gentile church. And listen to what happened. During this time, some of the prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus, there he is again, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius and the disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brother, brothers living in Judah. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and by Saul. Now I want you to get this, okay? Now I'm going to just go quickly. First of all, the birth of the church, the voice of the bride came in prophecy as the Holy Spirit came. The second thing, the voice spoke and spoke ministry and the purposes of God to God's people. I think this is wonderful. Notice something, how far we have come from the pattern. You know, the church now, we go from year to year and not... Okay, I'm not pointing fingers or whatever. And uh, we kind of come up like this and say, well, you know, in this next year, 
we need to have us a great theme. So we're going to sit down and get the theme together and we're going to have committees and we're going to put a committee together and we're going to do this. I'm not against organization, but can I tell you something? You find that nowhere in the book of Acts. They didn't get together and say, well, you know, the Bible says that we are uh, supposed to uh, uh, go and win the world, so we need to get our plan together and see how we're going to do evangelism and, and, and do a survey of the city that we're going. You don't find that nowhere in the Bible. Are you listening to me? But then we come up with those plans. And this next year we're going to do this, next year we're going to do that. That's all right if God said but see, what the church is supposed to do is to wait on the voice of God because God never does anything He don't say. And then we wonder out, why didn't it work? Or we have places that it works. But you know what? It's worked out in the flesh of man. And the flesh of man don't have the power of God. I'm glad y'all sitting down on me, but I don't care. I'm going to tell you like it is, okay? And I, only, I want you to see what's going on here. They, listen, you know how they get their missionary program together and they're uh, uh, helping people together? They got it from a word from God. Can you imagine? I want you to think about how, how totally bizarre this is to the way we operate. Okay. Prophet stands up and predicts. So there's going to be a famine in all this area, Judea and whatever, and said, uh, let me just say it this way. There's going to be a famine in Russia and all this area over here that we've been going to and minister to. So we need to, say, so the Lord has given us that word, you know? And then the chairman of a mission stands up and says, well, hey, let's don't leave. That's the word of the Lord. Let's get us together and we'll, let's gather money. Let's gather resources so we're ready when all of that takes place. You know what? I am truly convinced that we're not supposed to find out afterwards what's happened. I believe God wants to tell us before. But are we listening? Are you listening to me? That's the church. I want you to see the picture of the early church. Then Acts chapter 11, we find the direction and the prophetic voice of the church. We, we, that's where he gave what he just gave right there and the, uh, the direction of the church and what the prophetic word of the church is and where we're going. Why, how'd it come? Through prophetic words. Listen to me. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be, pra I want to be practical. We have eldership, and we do. And when I meet with them, eldership, one of the things that I say to our elders I don't, people come to me and say, well, you know, people are saying, people when they say we need to do this, people say we need to do that. I, I look and I, you can tell, that's not your job. You listen to me? That's not your job. Your job is to help us hear the voice of God to do what God tells us to do. Not what people tell us to do, what God says. It is His church. That's why it's important for us to, when we come to church, whenever we're doing whatever we're doing, that we need to be ready to give the Word of God. God says in 1 Peter chapter 3, and I want to say as verse 17, that when we speak, we should speak as the very oracles of God or the very words coming out of God's mouth. Are you prepared to do that? The church is supposed to be prepared. Last of all, Acts chapter 21, verses 8 and 9, the women are not left out of prophesying. Acts 21, 8 and 9, it says Philip's daughters prophesied. I, I want you to see the prophetic church. Philip is in another city, he's in Caesarea. And what does he ha have? He has prophecy or prophets in his group that prophesy. Acts chapter, I'm going to go back to these, just want to hit them just a minute. Let me hit them just a minute. Acts chapter 11, we see Agabus. He's the first one that's mentioned in the New Testament is, is a prophet in the church, in the church. Now, I'm not talking about John the Baptist. I'm talking about a prophet in the church. Agabus is the first one that's mentioned, and I want you to get that. He comes down to uh, Antioch, and he speaks to them about something that's about to happen in the world around them. There's a famine coming, and they start preparing for that. I think it's very interesting. Listen to me or follow me just a minute. Just, just a minute. Hold on. This will be good for you. I think it's real interesting. That's Acts chapter 11. In Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 13, I got references. You can get them on the outline out there. All of that's on references. Acts chapter 13, we find what in Antioch? 
prophets, 